Hello, my name is Dr. David Sirwa. It's a pleasure to be here and have an opportunity to talk to you about a really important topic. I'm an academic dentist um, and I became interested years ago in what I'll call gap illnesses. These are illnesses that often fall between dentistry and medicine. And one of the areas that became very obvious was a group of autoimmune bullous disorders. And you already know them as pemphigus and pemphigoid. So, what are pemphigus and pemphigoid? They are autoimmune, mucocutaneous, meaning skin and mucosal surface disorders. They're chronic, meaning they last lifelong. They're not contagious. There's no cure for these illnesses, but they're very manageable. Many patients achieve a complete remission on and off medication though they still have a lifetime risk for relapse. The dentist has a unique opportunity, and it's because of the way these illnesses present. 80% of patients who develop pemphigus vulgaris will develop lesions first in their mouth. So given the strong oral component in the initial presentation of mucous membrane pemphigoid and pemphigus vulgaris. There's nobody better qualified than a dentist to detect the abnormality and recognize it as pemphigus vulgaris or mucous membrane pemphigoid. On average, it takes a patient 10 months to achieve a diagnosis when the presentation is in the mouth. When the presentation is on the skin, 100% of patients have diagnoses in a matter of three to four months. It takes, on average, five doctor contacts for a patient to get a diagnosis when it presents in the mouth. When it presents on the skin, it's one or two contacts and it's done. 10% of patients end up seeing 10 or more doctors, and I personally have cared for patients who've seen as many as 25 doctors. And all of this comes down to a failure to simply recognize the illness and take the right diagnostic steps so that we avoid that delay. Think about the experience a patient is having after these lesions have started. They're afraid. They don't know what they are. They've started to contact doctors looking for answers. And if you consider the uncertainty of illness theory and recognize that the greatest time of fear and worry is during diagnosis, when the patient doesn't have answers and they have medically unexplained symptoms and signs, and you could imagine how a patient could be consumed with worry when they see these inconsistent test results, the options for treatments that are presented, even questions about what foods to eat, and understand how important it is that you help reduce that fear and anxiety by giving clear and concise information, educating the patient, or point them to resources like the International Pemphigus and Pemphigoid Foundation. Dentists don't get a lot of training in delivering news to patients about life-threatening illnesses. Don't be afraid to do that. Do it in a caring, gentle way with confidence that you're going to tell the patient that we have answers, and there are very effective treatments out there and you're going to help them get those treatments. The patient may come to you with an established diagnosis. You can still deliver to them the same confident, informed care that we've talked about. Let them know you understand the illness and how you're going to modify your treatment and your surveillance to make sure that you promote health and you prevent disease. Now think about 
the patient's quality of life as they're living with this illness. We're past the diagnosis. The patient's in treatment and they may even still have lesion activity. They may be having oral pain. They're taking immunosuppressive therapy, so they may be more susceptible to opportunistic infections and other comorbid conditions in the mouth. So you're going to have to take that into account as you deliver care for them. They still have mucosa that is fragile and you're going to have to take different steps when you're providing routine dental services for them. Hand instrumentation, being careful with that versus high-speed instrumentation and high-speed evacuation that could damage the epithelium. Using softer abrasives during a dental prophylaxis or cleaning. So to make sure that procedures that you're doing, you're doing with greater care not to disrupt the epithelium. Don't forget when a patient presents with multiple chronic non-healing ulcers that maybe started as blisters and maybe also on the skin. Think about pemphigus vulgaris, think about mucous membrane pemphigoid, educate the patient, relieve their fears and anxiety, inspire them with confidence and empathy and refer them to an oral health care specialist or a dermatologist colleague and get the diagnosis and get them into treatment. And you'll improve their quality of life in ways that you can't imagine. Thank you. Thank you.